Hey guys, we all know that due to transport, sometimes your laser bed can be out of alignment. So today in this video, if you keep watching, I'll show you how to fix that the proper way. So guys, there's two methods which I use to level my bed correctly. You have the choice of using a spacer, which I need to say to you, you have to make sure that it's square on all four sides in order for it to be flat on your bed. But if you don't have something like that, you can always use a ruler. You just gotta take more time because you have to make sure your measurements are accurate. Okay, so method number one, using your spacer and making sure that it is square, we're gonna go ahead and place it underneath our nozzle in the corner. Now I've just moved it further out because I wanna show you what I'm doing. What we're gonna do is raise this corner until it touches the nozzle completely and we repeat that in all four corners. But if you do not have a square or a spacer that is square, you can go ahead and use a ruler by placing it on your bed flat against the gantry and measuring it from there. But you have to make sure your ruler is not at an angle and is flat against the gantry, otherwise your measurement will not be true. So now that you've been given two methods to do your leveling, today I'm gonna to be using the ruler method purely because I do not trust this being square and I'm gonna rely on accurate measurements to do this properly. So there's two ways of doing this. Either you can move the bed up until it's absolutely flush on one corner, and then you move the worm screws underneath in order for them to all be the same level, and that's with your eye. Now, that way is not the most efficient. The best way to do it is by taking the bed, moving it up until one side is completely flush. You measure it against your gantry and see if the measurement is the same in all four corners. Now, that is the way I'm gonna be doing it because I want it to be done accurately. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our machine is powered off and make sure that we have everything safe after we've made sure that our bed is in the place that we want it to measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and move up my Z-axis until it, one corner is flush with our machine. All we need to do now is just power down our machine and then we can open the front panel. Okay, now we're gonna need some Allen keys. So what we need these for is to disengage the motor. Now in order to do that, I've chosen a simpler way to do it than actually removing the motors themselves. So we're gonna use these Allen keys, remove two screws on these brackets on either side, and then that should be able to allow us to actually move the worm screws without having the motors tensioned on the belt and engaged. So let's do that. Alright, now that I've done the right hand side, uh, as you can see the belt is very loose. That technically means that the motors are disengaged so that I can actually move these by hand. Now that that side's done, I'm going to do this side. Now I really, really suggest using some really nice thick gloves for this because we're going to be manhandling on grease and oil itself. It's going to be very messy rather wear gloves. You don't want this oil to be on your fingers. Now what I suggest to do, or use a pen or a pencil maybe, just mark the location of where this was because this moves up and down, back and forward when you tighten this bracket back. So I suggest taking something just so you can mark on the metal as you can see right here that you know where this was previously. Otherwise you don't know how tensioned this belt has to be and if you do it incorrectly, then unfortunately you're going to mess up the bed. Okay, 
Okay, now that the motors are disengaged, what we need to do is move our laser head or the gantry, just the gantry actually, to each back and forward position. When you move it forward, switch the machine off. When you need to move it back again, switch on the machine, move it there, then switch it off. Do not move this by hand when the machine's off. It is really not a good thing to do and eventually you'll start causing damage to your motors. And the alignment of your machine also matters. So try and not touch this or move it when it's off. So let's switch it back on, move it to where we need it and then continue. So since the machine's gonna be there, I'm gonna switch it off so that it's at the back so that I don't have to move it forward. So now that's in the position I need. We're gonna do the back and then move to the front. Remember to switch on the machine and move it there instead of moving it with your hand when it's off. So I've measured from the bed itself to the gantry underneath and I've got 85 millimeters. So now I'm not gonna move that back right one. I'm gonna use that as my basis point. So now what I need to do is move over to the right hand side. We're gonna go ahead, measure, and we're gonna see if it needs to move up or down and re-measure until I get to 85. So let's quickly have a look. So as you can see, we've got somewhere around 90, so this definitely needs to go up. Okay, now that that one is correct, we now need to move to the front and just repeat the process. So we switch our machine back on, we just move it to the forward position and we start this process again. Okay, that's as far forward as we can go. So let's switch it off and let's start measuring. So now remember the backs were 85, so now we need to make sure the fronts are also 85. Okay, this front one is just short of 85, so we just need to bring it down a little bit. So let's quickly go and do so. And there we have it, 85. All right, that was simple enough. Let's do the left hand side. So look, it's more towards 90, so this side needs to change. Okay, and there we have it, 85. So now all we have to do is just make sure that we measure all four corners again, just to make sure that they're all in the right place. Because remember, whenever you move one side, the other side could go out because we are tipping it in four directions. So let's just quickly double check. And if there's any that have gone out, I'll quickly make a small adjustment. And then once we're done, we'll go to the next step. All right, now that we've measured our bed and we've made a few small tweaks and you know what, it didn't take us very long. I now know that my bed is flat in all positions. Now there's one more thing I have to indicate for you guys before you go and put your belt back. Now what you'll notice on some of the areas where you've got the teeth on the, the big section down below, as I pointed out, you'll see there's a little hole for a grub screw. Now mine didn't come with grub screws, it's not a problem at all, but if yours did, and you're wondering why you can't make any adjustments, it's probably because your grub screws are there and you either need to loosen them or tighten them now so that you can lock them in place so it never goes out again if you somehow had to change your belt. Because when you do change your belt, you'll by accidentally move those gears and then you lose your position. So it's just a thought to keep in mind. Now we need to just put our belts back into position and remember where we've marked them so we don't over tension our belts. 
I'm going to just put my Allen key there. I'm going to make sure that we line it up to where it was before. I'm going to tighten it a little bit and then I'll move it into place. Now when you're tightening these things back, maybe tighten a little bit, push it, tighten a little bit and push it just so you make sure that you actually put it back into place. Because doing this one-handed inside the machine is not the easiest thing to do. Make sure to not over tighten any of the screws because if you strip them you're going to have a hard time having to redo this because there's not much space and not many areas you can redo the screws. Make sure your tension's there just in case. Make sure that everything is back where it's supposed to be. Make sure it's around this roller bearing and make sure that this roller bearing is not moving. And once you've done that, you can move on to the next one. Now that we've put our belts back in, now we're just going to quickly test our motion up and down, see if nothing's in the way of the motors, see if the belts rotate properly, and if everything's fine, we put the cover back on and our job is done. Okay, now we just need to test our motors underneath and our belts are moving fine. Oh, and there we have it. Now we have tested everything, everything works. All we need to do is put our covers back on. That's exactly what I was looking for. But remember, if this isn't for you and you do not want to do it yourself and you're a bit worried, you can always call the technical support and arrange a technician to do it for you. Thank you for watching.